I'm just in management mode, really. At least you've got something going. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm in a trades, but nothing that I've shared with these guys, really, which is um, just the way it goes, I'm afraid. Yeah. It happens, mate. It happens. Yep. Um, here we are, guys. We are loving it live on YouTube. Have a thumping Thursday, will you? Because I hope I do. It's been a long wait uh, for a decent trade set up this week for me, and I'm not sure I'm going to get one. We will find out very, very soon, I hope. Ash is still going uh, with um, with the footsie, so you guys should be trolling some pips into the bank. How's it going, Ash? Yeah, going going really well. I think um, the guys should be up around about 2% on the trade uh, now. Nice. Um, nice. And Sui will be up... We could be up four percent, I think, if uh, if he if he stayed in, um, uh, because we're obviously in the uh, in the US show we had a uh, an ad point, so we've uh, we should have been able to double that one. Now let me just get uh, get online with everybody as well. I can show you uh, this trade. You probably, I mean, there's not uh, there's not a whole bunch to do. The, the um, there is something that we need to address, which is the potential bounce. You know, it's likely to bounce in the area that we're in. Hi, Sweet, and he's telling, telling us yes, he has. Good man. So, what are you up about four uh, percent? There we go. Sorry, I'm just getting in the YouTube show. You're right, mate. There we go. Oh. Okay. Well done. Well done, Sweet. So, yeah, about, around about four percent, Sweet. I don't know. I don't know uh, if you've uh, if you've traded in exactly the same way that I have, but we we. we you take a 50 fantastic mate that's amazing okay well let's just quickly get to the footsie i'm looking for a bounce in this area um nice alan nice so we're all we're all in Haven't profit on the footsie. Yet, no problem let me give you the screen uh in actual fact uh let me make sure we're on the right screen there's no point in me showing everybody futures because um the uh everybody's trading why can't I get on that now? Oh, I just locked myself up here. Oh, here we go. There we go. Right. So this is this is where we're at um, uh, with the FTSE now. Um, th this is a bounce point. You know, it, it would be it would be very surprising to me if we don't bounce here. So it is a, it is a good point to uh, to start taking profit. Um, really, um, I wouldn't close the whole position. Well, I'm, I'm, I can't really sort of um, say one way or the other what, what everybody should do. But um, but the way I'm seeing this is that there's still room to run, and you do with uh, this information what you will. I'm looking at this line here, and uh, and I'd anticipate a bounce up to this level. So there's there's quite a long way. You know, there's there's like 60 pips between this point and this point, but we're on the the uh, the monthly pivot here, and. Um, and also, um, there is a um, we're, we're right on the neckline of the head and shoulders, which has worked out really well uh, so far. Now, if we can get through, this is the thing about uh, about this trade. If we get through and look at the look at the point we got in at, we, we just we just got in just under this um, just under the pivot, just at fifty nine sixteen. So uh, we've we've managed to pick it up on top of the right shoulder, and it's pretty good practice to take a bit of profit on the neckline. But um, but I, I you know I, I wouldn't have thought you know if it's if it's going to come up on the next half and take you out it's probably likely that the trend is over um, so uh, so that's the reason that um, <clears throat> that uh, I think your stops at break even at this point is absolutely fine but you know you have to you have to kind of figure out your appetite are, are you happy with the trade so far because another way you could use this is take profit here if it pops through trade it again um after the pop through so you, you could you could close the trade down completely if you want um so uh you know that that's really down to everybody's call but um but i'm looking for a move back into the daily pivot um and uh, and at that point it would be a really good ad point so again you could take profit here uh see if you can um get back in at the daily pivot and see if it's going to come down the um the issue, obviously, with we're taking profits is if, if it keeps going, then uh, you're not in the trade anymore. Um, and I've got to be honest, I don't know what's going apart from the technical level, which is which is de definitely strong. I don't know what's going to change uh, direction, but um, that doesn't mean that we don't get into a bit of a range here. So uh, you know, there's nothing um, there's nothing on the horizon <clears throat> today that uh, that would necessarily drag this trade down lower. 
Um, it would just be down to how much fear was created yesterday. Uh, so there are permutations here, mate. And, uh, and when you look at it, um, the most, the, and, and it depends on, uh, on how aggressive you're going to be and, and everything else, but the most sensible thing to do at this point is, uh, is take, take, you know, take something off the table because, um, as I say, we're really looking for it to bounce up to here <coughs> and then, um, and then get back in again. So, um, you know, do, do with it what you will and, uh, do, do, do with that information what you will. So you either accept <coughs> that you were, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, we meant to have cameras on, aren't we? Forgot, forgot my camera. There we go. There we are. Here I'm in the room. Um, hello. -ish. Yeah, you either, hello, buddy. How are things with you there? Um, yeah, so you either accept that, well, you, you, you know, there's, there's two things you've got to square. You either accept that it might go through and you miss out on the rest of the trade. You uh, you take profit here and try and get in up here, or if it pops through time, try and take profit. Um, or you use um, a, a break of resistance to take profit. Now, the way that you could do that is that you can see with this hourly chart here, there's a little high here and a little very clear um, on this hourly chart. Um, so, so clear on the hourly chart. But if you flip to your 15, like we have here, you can see there's a bit of a trend. You know, that's the, that's the, uh, the current trend on the 15. And, and uh, we are starting to see some signs and signals of, uh, of a little bit of strength here. So if it pops through this, um, this weekly pivot and this trend line, the likelihood is at that point <clears throat> that we may well then extend up to the daily pivot. So you could, rather than coming out here, you could look for this point instead um for um for the trade uh, to bounce up to so uh, so there's a, there's a, there's a few ways to play this but uh, but as i say I, I think that there's a there's a, a a fairly high likelihood that we bounce here because of the technical levels but there's a very weak likelihood that we bounce here because of the fundamentals um so uh, so as i say that there's there's two things in play and you just have to figure out how you qualify um one over the other you know, the, the, the thing about this area is that um, we flip back to the hourly here. There is the trend line and the monthly pivot. So that does put um, this is a buy zone now. Um, the question is, uh, no, you don't. That doesn't mean you buy. No, no, um, no, no question about that, that we won't be buying here. But we are in a buy zone. So the buy zone becomes a retracement zone if you're in a trade to the short side. Um, and uh, and then you just have to figure out what's the best uh, course of action. Now the other thing about this is if we're looking uh, looking well, should I go around the right right round the, the, the full analysis? Or really, I pr probably should save that for the um, the guys in the US session, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'll I'll, um, I'll, I'll we, do you that. Get the pound trade on too. And we should get the pound trade on. Okay, we'll, we'll come back uh, later on um, to this, but uh, let's get the pound trade on and we'll do some further analysis on this stuff uh, later on in the session. Okay, mate. Um, you can take the screen anyway, can't you? There you go. Oh, well, I think so. We'll give it our best shot and see what happens. Yeah, that looks looks about right. Right, oh, pound US dollar. I've already got the trade on. So those of you who want to follow this and uh, bear in mind, it is a beta test. It's not a proven strategy. So if you are trading, this it needs to be at minimal risk. The entry for today is, uh, as always, it's an OCO trade. So one cancels the other. If we're triggered short, we cancel the, the long. If we're triggered long, we cancel the short. The sell order is at 1.2171. And the stop loss is at 1.2230. And the buy is exactly the reverse of that. We buy at 1.2230 and the stop loss is at 1.2171. And yesterday we had a minimal, I think we lost about three pips on the trade out of goodness knows how many, 70 or something. Uh, so yeah, wasn't even a cup of tea. Not even, definitely not a beer. Definitely not a beer. Um, so that's pretty much as we see it today. There's not a lot more to tell you at this point, except that if I was trading pound, it's going to be tough to be bear, uh, to be a bull. I've got to say, let's see what the week is saying. Saying down, 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 isn't it? And yeah, nice little rabbit's ears, tweezer top sitting there as well. Uh, more of an H pattern there right now that's interesting 
that's a thing, you know, an H pattern. Do you do H, H patterns, Ash? Uh, an H oh. pattern, what, what, what is that? Yeah, it's kind of there. We've got... I've um, never, never, never seen... Oh, uh, yeah, okay, I, I, I kind of see it, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's a thing. Uh, I've never never traded it, I've got to say, but it, I know it's a thing. I don't know what it means, <laughs> but it is a thing. Well, it's now broken to the hot, to the bottom side anyway, as has the range. So I think uh, the pound is in a little bit of SH1T right now. We could be looking, if we get through this level here, we could be looking at a big crash. We'll see. I'm not convinced uh, that we're not going to do that, to be absolutely fair either. They're all talking dollar strength at the moment for the month of May, the merry month of May. I'm, I'm finding it really a tough, I guess, way to get into the market this week in particular. Haven't had any trouble up to now, but gee, this week is just a little bit tough to find those nice, clean entries. And yeah. uh, and really, we're not doing the, the only clean thing we've had. We're now in the Kiwi. Remember that weekly trade that we took? Was it two weeks? The ago? weekly, yeah, yeah. We, we've we've also got. I mean, the, the uh, gold has popped uh, beautifully as well to the upside. So uh, I can't remember who was in. I think it was Sweet as well. I think Sweet might be in the in the gold trade as well. So uh, having a cracking run there, mate. Uh, you know, adding to the footsie in the in the in the. Uh, Old trade, nice. if, that, if that was you, there was somebody in the US uh, US show that had taken that trade from yesterday. Um, Good on you guys, well done. <clears throat> inverted double top is that on the is that on gold? I'll have a look at that. Inverted double top. Never never heard of that one, but uh, seems like an inverted double top. Was that on the pound? Maybe where we were. Daily chart, inverted double top. Or oh, the H pattern, maybe? Okay, inverted double top. Like here? Like the H? Is that what we're seeing? I don't know that it means anything, to be fair, but I, I, I know people trade it. It's a thing. But how they trade it, I've got absolutely no idea, as I said. Um, should I go through the bloody Aussie again? Suppose it was true, eh? Go through the bloody Aussie, mate. <laughs> the Aussie <laughs> pairs. I mean, it's been it's been so good to us. The Aussie. Uh, I can't can't really admonish it. It's um it's just that this week it's leading us a merry dance. At least we're not losing money on it. We did we did place a small order earlier in the week that failed, but um, we've been very 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 cautious since, and I think that's a very good thing. The good outcomes. Uh, come when you wait and get the right setups. This is Euro Aussie, and we spoke about this. This was the only trade of the week, really. That's the one that we should have should have managed to get into. We didn't. We missed it. Uh -huh, sob, sob. Um, it looks like it's got chance here. This really does look like it's got a chance now to go. Um, don't forget that we had Aussie news out as well this, uh, this morning, which was a phenomenal number. Couldn't believe it. And the mark, I don't know, the market has reacted kind of in reverse. I'm waiting for this to turn around and for the Aussie to go back into bull mode, actually. I, I don't um, quite uh, get it. Sorry, sorry, mate. Was, it, was that right? Because I thought I'd heard that uh, the unemployment numbers were pretty dismal. No, they were amazing. Six oh, point something well, percent. Well, let me have a look. Yeah. The, uh, let me have a look. What, what I, I haven't got it in front of me. Whatever. I mean that would suggest well, that. that uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, employment was uh, was negative uh, five nine four point three thousand five and five hundred ninety foot. So almost six hundred thousand negative employment change, mm -hmm. which represented a beat on the forecast. Right? Is that right? No, that was a miss. Really? But the unemployment rate was a beat. So the only, they were they were uh, they were forecasting eight point three percent to unemployment, but it was only six point two percent. Yeah, that's um, the, I mean, that's the number that you need to take notice of, the unemployment rate, in my opinion. And I can't yeah. believe that, that we've only had a 1% increase during COVID-19. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. 
Well, I suppose the interesting thing about the number is that people aren't hiring uh, by the looks of this. You know, that the uh, the employment change. So, so there's no hiring going on, even though the unemployment rate uh, didn't sink quite as much. It was still a miss. I mean, it was still um, worse than previous. So the unemployment rate was growing uh, because it was a green number. It was a, a bit bit uh, bit misleading, but uh, but the unemployment number is growing, but not as bad What's as expected. What's the unemployment rate in the states? What's the unemployment rate around the world? It'll be a lot bigger. Oh, I mean, than yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you make a fair point, mate. Mm-hmm. I suppose that the thing with the Aussie though is that we have had a decent run to the upside, and then you start going, okay, where's fair value? And maybe fair value would have been um, still those numbers to be in check. So with those numbers coming off, because we've had that rally, maybe fair value is a bit lower than this point, even though it should be, you know, um, uh, higher um, in the long term than the dollar. Maybe maybe right now this isn't the um, this isn't quite the right uh, the right level for the Aussie. So it needs to come back a little bit. I think it's bang on the right level. To be fair, I think sixty five cents is around about where um, most economists see fair value for the Aussie versus the dollar. But you know that's going to change over time. I think it'll actually be better than that at some stage as the US dollar yeah. disintegrates to zero. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> yeah. to not gonna happen, of course. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, yeah. I don't think the, the greenback's worth two uh, two tubs of goat shit, frankly. But Apparently, the world, <laughs> yeah. the world seems to think differently. And we've got to go by what the world thinks, not what I think. So, uh, look, I'm I'm a short-term bear still, the Aussie. There's no question about that. I mean, this trade's gone, by the way. I've got to get rid of that. We cancelled that one. And where is price now? Six, ten pips below where that entry was. So you would have had to ride uh, all of this garbage out had you left that trade in the market, which was about here somewhere, I think. Um, not for me, and through a news event, very, very interesting. To be absolutely frank with you, I traded the news event, and I traded on Aussie Swissy. And here's what I did. I was thinking exactly what I just said, that um, the, well, not exactly what I just said. I thought the number would be far worse than the prediction, than the forecast, and it was a beat, as I said. Now, I expected uh, that on the back of that, that the Aussie would crash. So I actually got into the market before the news and was prepared to lose a quarter of a percent with the promise of gaining a truckload of money down here, right, as the Aussie disappeared. Uh, That wasn't the case, but neither neither was the case, actually, because um, the number was far better than I anticipated and therefore I expected the Aussie might even rally but it did start to turn around after it hit the pivots here and took me into profit but as soon as that happened I moved my stops to entry and now I am out I made profit I took some profit but um, I am now out of that trade whether I want to get back in or not is another question and really from this chart if this candle were to close let's say on or near its high Uh, then I would be a fan of trading that short. We may get there yet, trading this down to the monthly pivot. It's kind of just crept and crept and crept and crept without giving us an entry. Uh, But I'm still on it. And if it does happen, then away I shall go. The same could be said, Aussie Yen got away a little bit uh, on the back of that news. And that now looks like a forlorn prospect, but never say never. It could get up to the daily pivot give us a false break in in particular, that would be good if it got up to here, came back underneath both the pivots and retested the confluence area, then happy days, we could trade it down to the monthly pivot. Am I convinced the Aussie's still going short? Um, Short term, yeah, yeah, I'm still there. Absolutely, haven't changed my mind. Um, Nice break and retest of the trend line here, not quite the daily pivot, would we call that a daily pivot test? I'll leave it up to you guys. Uh, it's not for me. It's not. So I'll I'll still be bearing that in mind that we have an untested daily pivot. But you know, from my point of view, that's the only sign that this is going south right here. Is that retest? And if you're going to trade that, you would have traded it there. I don't, but you you might have. Um, my trade would have ended here, but it wouldn't, I wouldn't have taken the trade because I'm trading into that. So this is the story with me this week. Um, every trade that looks reasonable to take has got issues. 
And when that's the case, uh, I generally stay out of the market. Aussie yen, um, as I just mentioned, could come up here. We'd be looking for that to happen. We've spoken about Aussie Swiss. We don't want to go near Aussie Kiwi because of the big uh, rally on that uh, across as a result, as a result rather, of the Kiwi news uh, only yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think it was. Aussie CAD uh, on the four hour chart looks potential short material here. Now, we, this is the only trade that we took this week and we failed. If you will recall, after getting a little into profit a little bit, it just went whoosh, and away we went. You'll also recall that I said the only way to trade this now would be to trade it short. And if you wanted to trade a one bar reversal, then, uh, well, one bar false break, really, then you could place an order underneath here. I didn't do that. Again, it's got issues trading straight into the weekly pivot without taking a reasonable first profit. So it was far less than a third of the risk. And when that's the case, I generally don't take the trade. <laughs> and that was the case. And it looks like right now you'd be, uh, well, you would have taken profit at the weekly pivot. So um, very little profit, but profit just the same. It hasn't really given me another, again, hasn't given me an opportunity. The lower high that you see there, I can't trade that candle. That's just ridiculous. I can't trade it. So what I can do is give myself a trend line. And if that were to break and retest, maybe I can think about it. But gee, I'm close to the bottom of the range, aren't I? Or I think about this weekly pivot double cross again. But the first one is always the best to, to trade, which is why we took that trade. We've since had a second and now a third potentially. Ooh, am I over it? Um, yeah, look, I am, but my bias keeps me in the game. But I do want something that's that's really nice, and this is not really nice. And I, I may just stay out of the market for the entire week. It's looking that way. CAD Swiss was another one I wanted to trade this week, and uh, has that set up? Yes, it has set up. It's set up as a false break of this trend line. Break consolidate back above retest not only the trend line but the daily pivot and the monthly pivot you know if um if i'm sitting here and i haven't got the weekly pivot on my chart i just take that trade instantly and i don't even think about it um do i take the trade is the question do i really want to put that much risk into um into a trade which is mm, it's kind of so-so because we're so so because we're in the middle of nowhere or no man's land, but because we've visited the extreme of this channel last from the bottom, then I'm expecting it to go to the top. Hence my my bullish outlook or my bullish bias. So yes, the setup's there, definitely there. Um, where would I put my stops? Well, initially I would have put it there, but since we've had this move down, doji like. Uh, I think I need to put my stops underneath the uh, the swing here. So I'm going to take that trade, but I'm going to put my stops here rather than under here. I looked at this this morning and thought, mm, mm, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. Uh, but now I look at it from a wider perspective. If I can get my stops down here, I think it's a reasonable trade to take. It'll be wrong if we get back below the monthly pivot. First of all, We've got to get above the monthly pivot. So that's that's not a bad way to be because if we can get through that resistance, potentially we're going to get through that one as well. But I'm asking a lot of the of the pair. There's no doubt about that. Oil will play a major part. Righto, let's place the order. So it's going to be CAD Swiss on the four hour charts. And I haven't got the levels, my goodness. If weekly pivot is at At, at, at 60.20, can't be right, 69.20 maybe. Come on, you can do it. Play the game, doesn't want to. Yep, 69.20, so we're gonna go five pips above there. So 69.25 will be the entry and the stop loss will be five underneath there. So 68.71. 68.71 and 69.25, yeah? 
So, we're going to buy CAD Swiss on a stop order at 69.25. And our stop loss will be at 68.71. Is that what I said? Did I say 68.71? What strategy is the CAD Swiss trade? Um, my strategy kind of never changes much, uh, and we call it the slingshot ace. It is a, oh, just... which, which particular setup? It's a false break, false break thing. 69.25 and the stop loss was, can anybody remember? Sorry, mate. Do you know what? I was just looking at the, uh, I was just looking at the questions box and looking at the Aussie, uh, the, uh, the, the Aussie dollar. Um, mm -hmm. So I can't remember what you said. Um, I was looking at the, <laughs> nice uh, the Aussie to see you paying attention, Ash. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sino was asking <laughs> a question about the, uh, the Aussie. Um, yeah. So uh, I'll come to the Aussie later on, but yeah, you go. Sorry, buddy. I'll, I'll try and That's help right. if you say the numbers again. Well, I'm, I'm going to punt with 68.71. I could be wrong there. I'll check it. 68.71. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. That is the stop loss. So uh, away we go. Now let's start talking profit levels. So if we're in there and we're in there, our risk is what, 50 odd pips? It is easy. Yeah. Um, 54 pips, I think. DR2 is right there. We love DR2, don't we, guys? It's a great level. Um, yeah, we can just sneak that in. We're going to go with 69.41 as TP1. I should be typing this up, shouldn't I? If you've got to take it, mate, take it. That's fine. Oh, no, no. It's actually for Sino. Sino was just asking about the channel. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, so... Okay, we've got, um, what's this cross? CAD Swiss. CAD Swiss on H4 by at 60, <laughs> oh my God, 69.25, that's right. 0 0.6925. <coughs> Stop loss, 0 0.6871. And I'll just give you a TP1. TP1 is at, has anyone got the level? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate being hamstrung by this box. I know. Like, won't let me see the levels. Uh, I think it was 17 pips, which gives us <laughs> what? 60, 69.42. Might have been 41. I'm not sure. I'll check it. 69.42. There we go. So there's trade. We're buying CAD Swiss on the four-hour chart. 69.41, was it? Okay, thank you. Let me change it, but not get it wrong or I'll get in all sorts of trouble. Be amazed at the difference one pip can make, guys, and it's always when you won't make a mistake. There we go. So there's the trade. Um, move, Remove one third at that point. That'll get some risk off the table. Uh, leave your stops where they are. TP2, you can look at TP2 around about there. And I can't see it because Ash has got his face in the way. Sorry, I will remove my face. <laughs> no, you're right. It's going to be a box there anyway. Uh, 6973, guys. 6973. I'm not saying that's set in concrete, but that's where I'd be looking for my TP2. It'll depend on what's happening at the time. Okay. Um, that is the trade, mate. Now, what Great were you stuff. asking? Were you asking me something about? No, no, no. I was just looking at the. Uh, uh, I can have a quick look if you if you like it. Just uh, the chart here for Sino, just about the uh, the Aussie the Aussie dollar. I've had a, I've had a bit of a look through it, and um, 
Um, I just want to clarify some of the levels that he's got, but uh, but generally sure. speaking, um, so FTSE's just uh, just edging up it here. So um, if you've taken profit, I think you you've probably done the right thing. This um, this area here would be um, the most sensible place to take profit, but uh, but it does mean you're going to give back. Well, it's not a lot of pips, is it? Maybe maybe ten pips, but that's the that's the area that uh, that it'd be better to close down your trade if if you're still in. Uh, just uh, FYI, because the the weekly pivot is just reacting as a bit of a resistance zone as well. Might get caught between these two pivots. What we really want is it up here, so we can add. But um, but it's got to get through this uh, this little trend line here. So let's see uh, if that trade uh, needs to be uh, taken out or not. Let's have a look at the Aussie. So now, are you Sino looking at? Uh, now you said under the weekly level. Now the first thing that I'm looking at here is the daily pivot. That looks like a really good point to go short to me. Now let's have a look at this on on some longer term time frames to start with. This is the um, this is the the uh, the four hour chart here. Now you can see that there's a low here, a higher low here, and it looks like a little level there, and already a test of what's near the um, the daily pivot. So I wouldn't want to go short here for sure, um, but that line looks really defined. Look at that; that looks really good, nice and clean. Is there's the really clean touches and bounces here, a breakthrough and a retest and a, and a bounce away. That was obviously the first opportunity, but it hadn't touched the daily pivot at that point. Not quite. Maybe maybe it's close enough to to qualify. Um, but um, but just the way that the, the FTSE 100 currently looks, you know, I think the FTSE probably will have a pop. Um, to uh, to get back up a little bit uh, here, but uh, and, and if it does, then that might suggest that the the Aussie uh, and the risk on sentiment might just continue uh, to the upside until the U.S. session. That's the that's the time that I'm really thinking that we should be probably looking for the shorts again in the uh, in the equities, um, and uh, and maybe this Aussie as well. So, um, so you know, g given given the fact that the Aussie is risk on and, and global equities are risk on, if the the equities can get a pop up here, then um, then we're likely going to see the uh, the Aussie go up a little bit as well, and, and maybe we'll, we'll see some um, some weakness in the yen, um, but only until the U.S. session. So we're we're looking for maybe a few hours of trying to carve out uh, a bottom here. Now, obviously, if uh, if this gives way, then the Aussie's going to probably, if if the, the global market go gives way, the Aussie's probably going to go with it. Um, but what would be a, a decent spot would be this um, this daily pivot to me. You know, that's what that's what I look at. That's what I'm looking at. Now, if you're looking at a broader picture, you were talking about a weekly channel. So on the weekly, and I have to go clean here because the pivots become a mess on a on a weekly. I'm not quite sure what you're looking at unless you're looking at this higher level here or oh, that line there if you're looking at that line there then that that looks the perfect place to go short but you you know you, you're probably not talking about today um or, or even uh, that the rest of this week um so if you could just qualify, is there a correlation between Aussie and the global equity markets? Yes, there is, mate. Yes, there is. The, the, the correlation um, with some of the current, you know, in fact, all currencies have a correlation to the, the global equity market. Every single one of them is just working out. I mean, the, the simplest two are the Aussie and the yen. Uh, global equities um, weaken, then you will probably see a yen strength and um, and uh, an Aussie uh, weaken. If global equities strengthen, then you'll probably see an Aussie um, an Aussie strengthen with it because it tends to be a risk on currency. Um, so risk on Aussie equities, um, risk off uh, yen, sell off equities, risk off, risk on gold sometimes, uh, risk on, risk off uh, uh, the, do the dollar sometimes. Gold is more of a risk on current, uh, more of a risk on um, metal, but what can happen is because people tend to buy gold or people can use the hedging strategy where they'll buy gold and equities. If the equities start to tank, then you might start to see people taking some profit in gold to, uh, to clear out their equities. So it's not always an absolute marriage of, of, uh, of, of confluence, but uh, to, you know, the, the things that are risk on uh, tend to be, you know, equities and gold falls into that uh, as well, depending on what kind of environment we have. You know, if it's risk on, but tentative risk on, like we've seen recently, then gold will probably rally with it. Um, certainly when we come out of um, the, uh, 
um, that the situation we're in, that, that the gold is also likely to strengthen along with equities as people buy protection. Um, but risk, uh, but, and, and the Aussie will probably strengthen as well. But yeah, risk off definitely um, would sell off the Aussie. So I'm not sure what you're looking at when you, when you say a channel on the weekly. And, and is it this line that you're looking at here? I'm not sure, but if you just qualify that. Um, so close the, the rest of the 50% also. Um, Alan, well, the thing is, Alan, I, I, you know, it's difficult for me to say to you what you should do. Um, all I'm saying is that, um, you know, because I'm, I'm going to trade this in, in a very, uh, you know, a, a specific way, but you're not going to be around when I'm, you know, uh, looking around as well. Um, let me just bring up the chart you need to see, which is the UK 100. So the UK 100, let's have a look at it. Um, the likelihood is it's going to, it's going to get, uh, not the likelihood, it, there's, there's, a, there's a decent chance this bounces, a decent chance this bounces. Now, what you've got to do is um, with your own head, uh, figure out, can you sit, are you going to sit through this bouncing up again and taking away some of your profit? Now, the one reason you would do that is because the, the equities are really weak here. Um, the reason that it would, it, it will, it will, uh, there's a, there's a decent chance it bounces here is because um, we are at a monthly pivot and we are at a neckline. So we, we have, um, when, when we consider where would people buy this back up again, and they would probably try and get back in here at this, uh, you know, at first time of asking the, the, you know, the question of whether they, they win out or not is the tricky conundrum, you know, and, and we're always going through that. So in my opinion, there's probably one of three ways to play it. Now, the first trade was, uh, your trade is up here, isn't it? Um, at 16, 59, 16, which is 59, let's go. Oh, let's put a line in here so, so we can see. Oops. That's the that's the that, that's the entry price, and it was about a fifty pip stop loss, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was a fifty pip stop loss. So you're currently near two 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 um, two percent up. Now that's a, that's a really good uh, that's a really good um, um, uh, that's a really good trade. A two percent trade over a, a course of two days is fantastic. You know, if you're aiming for six percent a month, then uh, then you've managed to get uh, a third of the way there in in a couple of days. <clears throat> Not even. I mean, we we put it on yesterday morning, so we, we we're really talking about in 24 hours you've got two percent. So, um, what's the way to play it? Well, there's 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 one of three ways. You take your profit here and see if it comes through and retest this area. Which it probably will. At uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. Well, th there's a likelihood um, that that it, that it could. I can't say it probably will. We don't we don't know how weak uh, people are feeling about it. But there's there's the, uh, the there's the daily level down there. So there's quite a lot when we look at uh, at potential bounce points. Now, if it does bounce down here, then the, the likelihood is it's gonna if it's gone through this level, it'll probably uh, resist there again. So it could bash its head along this these areas for a little while. Actually, it looks like that might even be a little bit tighter. But when you when you um, when you look at this, um, there is there is technical reasons for this to bounce at this point. There's, there's technical reasons for it to hold at this point. Now I can't say if it will or it won't. I, I just don't know. Um, so you have to sort of like think about what's your what's your appetite, what's your analysis telling you um, about this. Now the one the, the one of three ways to play it is you hold on. You know, you, you hold on and see if it goes through. Um, but what you're saying there is that the signs that we've got, the, uh, the area here is not going to hold. Now, if you think the area um, is going to hold um, and you don't want to give up your profit, you close out here, wait for a bounce up again and, and go in again. Um, or if you close out here, you accept that, uh, that that particular phase is over and you wait for the next retracement. So, so what you do at this point is um, is going to be, you know, very much a a personal choice um, about um, about how you feel about um, uh, the market, how you feel about your levels, how you feel about uh, what the analysis is. My analysis tells me that um, there is a decent chance. Now, I'm not saying it will happen, but there's a decent chance that we bounce here. Now, how high how high we bounce. I don't know. We've got one, we've got a few different levels here. When we look on this on a daily chart, oh no, on an hourly, the hourly says that uh, that if we bounce, we bounce up to around about here. 
And um, if we think about, um, it, you know, if, if I'm looking at this line and I'm looking at the trend line and I'm looking at the daily pivot, that would suggest when I put my level on there and I look down at time, that would suggest, in actual fact, that's probably a little bit tighter. Let's just tighten this, this level up a little bit. Let's tighten that up. That would suggest that we're looking at a roundabout US Open to get back up to that point. Um, and at that, you know, during the US Open, if we are, if we, if we are to bounce for, throughout the morning, the US Open looks like a good time to short. So I'm using the trend line as a, as a, time, as a, as a predictor for time as well. Um, the question whether it does bounce here is, is the tricky one. You know, that's the, that's the tricky call. Uh, and you have to square whether you are willing to accept either scenario. Are you willing to accept if it doesn't bounce here and goes through that the 2% that you've made is it? Or are you willing to accept that if it does bounce here, that you have not taken profit down here and, and given yourself the, the, the chance to add up there? Now, over time, you will know the answer to that because you will know whether, um, and it's all about probability, really. You will know whether, if, you know, if there's a probable bounce here, then, um, then uh, should you close? Or have you meddled with your trades before only to see it go, you know, in the same direction and figured out actually you're better off just leaving it be? You know, don't try and second guess what's going to happen next. If you're in a profitable trade, just leave it alone. Um, so it, it's, it's very difficult for me to say you should do this because um, I, I don't want to tell you from this stage what the wrong or right thing is. Exit strategies in some respects are a lot more tricky than entry strategies um, because when it comes down to exit strategies, usually the market will be on a point of support in a, in a downtrend and that's that's what you well, that's where you're looking to come out but what price action do you, do you need to see down here to suggest that the, the price is turning around now what i quite like to see if i if i if i'm going to trade this um visually what does it need to do to suggest that at least we could get a pop up here well at, at this stage what i've got is a trend line down here that's what that's what there is. Now, if it breaks that trend line, it's probably going to take out the weekly pivot as well. And if it does that, then I would prefer to close my trades here, not in this area, because at this stage, I haven't really got confirmation that this is popping up. All I've got is just a little bit of price action, which is suggesting that um, there's some accumulation going on down here. But it's still got to get through here and it's still got to get through here on a very, very short term basis. If it gets through there at that point, I'm willing to give it up you know, um, and, uh, and then, and then I'll see if it can pop up and, uh, and I'll, and I'll see if I can take some, um, take another trade at that point there. Um, but, uh, but, but that's, that's the, the way that I prefer to do it, you know, rather than just, uh, just saying, right, I've got a soft level. Um, let's get out here. I, I prefer to see a pattern form and that's what I've got now. I've got a pattern forming and this little pattern would suggest that if it does break up, the measured move on the pattern is going to be, depending on when it breaks up, looks like that leads us to the daily pivot. You know, so, um, so, I, so I'd, like to, I'd like to use the same analysis on, egg, on entry um, as I would on exit. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm just going to give it some time to develop because I don't really want to close my trade if I don't have to. And the other thing about this is that um, uh, it makes work for yourself. You know, to, what we're doing down here really is guessing. We've got we got a level and we are going to be guessing. Um, so um, so I'm I'm not uh, I'm not able to say to you what what's the best thing to do. All I can say is that, that this is what I, my analysis tells me, and it's and it tells me that this is a a decent level for a bounce. But until I see a breakthrough of a of a, a um, of a pattern, then the bounce isn't in play. Um, right now, um, what's the rest of the question? Is that okay, Alan? Is uh, that's that, that hopefully that answered the question. I've tried to be as detailed as possible. Um, is the CAD Swiss considered a fake breakout? There was something about head and shoulders. Who was asking it? CAD Swiss, is that head and shoulders? On what time frame is that LT? On my trade, I would imagine. Um, oh, okay. It, it's a false break of the support trade line, is what I'll show you when, when you're done, Ash. Okay, all right. So, no, no, uh, no need to have a look at that <clears throat> um, for a head and shoulders. Um, 
well, uh, and if, let me just see if there's anything else that I can deal with while I'm on screen here. Let me just see that. Um, hey, PH, how you doing, buddy? We should get you in as a special guest uh, when you're ready, mate. If you if you want to come in and uh, and pop in and say howdy to Jeff and I, and and maybe do some uh, do guitar some wave rider stuff. Yeah. Bit, bit guitar and mouth organ, yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, and some wave rider stuff, that'd be awesome, mate. Because uh, there are often people asking about wave rider. In fact, there was somebody yesterday asking about a wave rider. It was um, Emmanuel, um, whose uh, whose analysis was absolutely right, but um, just maybe a bit bit late in the uh, in the trend. Um, Great man. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll see if we can get PH maybe on uh, next week. Good for you, PH. But pick a day is. Do, should we say Jeff? Pick a day for yes, PH. Pick a day, yeah. mate. Pick a box. Pick a day, mate. You can do it in here. Pick a day and and come on in. Um, whatever day is usually good for you. If you've got a a specific day that that tends to set up or or um or the the things are a bit quieter, then let us know. It'd be great to great to have you on board. Um, is there a correlation between Aussie and global? We, we dealt with that. If the U, if the markets go risk off on the on uh, on NY, will gold go up again? Um, it's a difficult one to say. Probably, probably, but I can only say probably, and that's purely because of what I said about um, gold being a, a, a hedge for for equities. So. Um, Gold. The problem with gold is the seasonals are, are difficult. Now, let's look at gold and 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 let's check out what we've got. Now, I'm going to look at the futures because I just find it a lot easier to. Um, oops, that's the wrong one. I, I find it a lot easier to uh, to analyze. Um, but uh, but when we look at gold, this is this is what I've got. I've got a daily um, a daily uh, pattern here that it's attempting. I like to that break. crystal. Crystal set her alarm for pH this morning. That's nice. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, oh, lovely. Uh, <laughs> PH is the, uh, he, he is the wave rider man. Um, and he's, and it's, you know, much, much better to kind of get PH on, on board if we can to kind of talk about some of those wave riders. Cause I guess most people in the room have probably done the wave rider. So uh, that's going to be a really good addition for us next week. Um, this is what we got with gold, right? We, 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 we're, 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 we are still caged inside this, um, this, uh, this triangle pattern on gold. And there's no doubt that if gold breaks to the upside on this one, then uh, then maybe that 1850 um, is um, is is on target, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, so because of this, it would suggest that if you're trying to get in here, you're late, and there's no point in trying to. You you could be really struggling to um, to get this um, off to the races, um, and uh, and and if the U.S. market tanks then it's going to be a very nervous trade to try and get in this one um, as, it, uh, as it potentially you know, does pop to the upside. But there's two things with gold that become a problem. The first thing is the dollar index, because you know, this, is, this is effectively gold versus the dollar. Um, and I think that there's probably better ways to play, better currencies to, to, to play gold against. Now, I found a dollar index um, chart earlier. Here it is. This is the dollar index. Now the dollar index um, also looks uh, looks in pretty good shape at this stage. Look at this on a, on a weekly. It looks in it looks in uh, in pretty good shape. Um, certainly moving higher. Um, yes, it's on a level of resistance. Um, but uh, after Jerome Powell's uh, speech yesterday, what happened was the dollar pops up. Now that's what we're trading at the minute. We're, we're still trading the sentiment that was a hangover from yesterday's speech, and the dollar pops up, as did gold. So the uh, the slight issue for gold is um, is the um, is the dollar uh, index. So uh, you'd want to see that weaken probably. But the other thing is that um, that people use gold as a hedge against equity. So as equities go up, they'll buy some gold just to, you know, in nervous times, they'll buy some gold just to protect. If, uh, if the equities come down, then, then at least their gold trade's going up. Um, but if the equities really start to tank, um, what do people do? There's two things they'll do. If they've managed to get in on the lower end of the, uh, of the equity um, move down here, then they'll just start taking some profit, no big deal, and gold will 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 probably continue to to go higher. But if they have been buying gold as a hedge and they want to hold equities, then they'll sell some of their gold just to cover themselves. So it's not quite as binary 
um, as saying uh, that uh, that gold will go up if equities go down. The likelihood is, yes, that will happen. Um, but because we don't know what people have been doing um, with their portfolios, you know, why have they been buying gold um, in, in the way that they have? Is it a hedge? Is it a hedge against inflation? If that's a, a situation, which, you know, is, is certainly going to be front and centre fairly soon, then, uh, then gold is just going to go and go and go and, and rock it to the upside. But, um, but when we look at the chart, if you just, just focus on the chart, you're late to get into gold here. So you'd have to see a break and a retest just if we're going to trade this, um, you know, as, uh, as, as kind of professional traders and be balanced if we're going to be robots about this. The human wants to get in, but, uh, but the trader has to go. It's got to do that. It's got to do that. And then we've got to have a look to see whether this is still viable. Um, so, um, so it's difficult to sort of say at this stage that, uh, that, that gold is the, is the play. Um, you know, we, we have seen a little bit of weakness here. Look at that rejection there on, on, you know, on this bar, massive rejection there. Let me um, pop that up a little bit. Massive rejection here, rejection here, rejection so far here. Um, so far, we're trying to break out again, but, uh, but we're just rejecting levels again. So really difficult place to try and buy gold. Really, really difficult place. And, um, and it's not that uh, you would be uh, wrong to suggest gold is going to go higher, but certainly at this level, it looks just really unattractive. Um, and that's not that it looks expensive. It's just the chart just looks, uh, looks like a difficult entry point. Um, once CAD Swiss said TP1, do, 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 do. what we got? Oh gosh, I've missed loads here. Um, a PH, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. Great PH, that'd be fantastic, mate. You you pick, and we will be uh, we'll be um, happy to accommodate that. PH has set my alarm. Great, Lewis. Uh, hey, Lewis. Nice. Jeff, would you comment on the set up for Euro Dollar Short? Oh, sorry, yeah, Euro Dollar Short on the H4. Just oh, enter gold. Okay. <laughs> After saying all that, sorry, Helen. Um, uh, Ash, since gold versus the dollar is difficult in future sessions, can you show us how to trade gold versus other currencies? I can. I can, but you've got to have it on your broker. So if you haven't got it on your broker, then you can't bring this – is, this is gold versus the euro. Um what else have I got? Uh, I've got a gold pound here somewhere. I don't know. I'm not sure where that's buried, but um, but I've got a gold. Oh, here we go. Gold versus the Aussie. Um, gold versus the Swissy, which seems like an odd pair to me. And gold versus uh, the pound. Um, so if you've got those options, then uh, then certainly you know we, we can we can have a look at those. Um, and and the lovely thing about trading gold against some another currency is that you've got a basket of other currencies that trade against gold just to make a judgment call on um, how how strong is gold. And if it's strong, then just just check out which is the weakest currency against the dollar, and you trade it against that instead. Uh, potentially, you know, uh, on a on a very simplistic way to put it. Um, yes, yeah, so this isn't a fusion uh, account, uh, Helen. Um, on gold, if no opportunities to go long, sh should then look for a setup to go short. Oh, I wouldn't make that. That uh, given given that the the, uh, the difficulty we got in the world, I wouldn't be looking at a gold. There's no doubt we should be looking at long gold. The problem with gold is the seasonals are are, 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 are pretty terrible, and um, and we're at a high price. Um, so no, the only time that I'd be looking for a a short in gold is if it started to go um probably below this level here but it's, it held out pretty well didn't it it's got to get it's got to get under the weekly pivot you know it's a long way down so under 1700 then yeah i i maybe, maybe a, a short in gold but not here um daily pivot could hold it up it's, you know, it's a breakout of that. Maybe it even pops up, um, you know, at some point. So uh, th this is the thing. If something isn't, um, isn't a long, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a short. Uh, it just means that uh, this is the wrong place to go long um, because, um, you know, s s same with the FTSE. It's, uh, the FTSE is not necessarily a, uh, a short at this stage, but, um, uh, but it's not a long. Because you're, you know, with with gold, you're in an uptrend, and it's and it looks pretty strong. And in actual fact, it looks like it might have even taken out some levels as well. 
you'd be scalping. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, that, that's not, my appetite wouldn't be for that personally. Uh, okay, mate, let me pass to you. Gosh, we've got, um, time Roger goes. D. Yeah, it Sorry, flies, buddy. it just does, and there's nothing you can do about it, mate. And no. look, don't, don't ever stop asking the questions, guys. That um, actually makes the show. So we're more than happy to, uh, to answer anything you have got. What am I looking at? Um, CAD Swiss. You wanted to know about CAD Swiss. Now, what it actually is, is a false break of a trade line here on pretty much a smaller time frame uh, that you can see here, the hourly chart. So we've got a back above it and we've retested it off the weekly pivot. But I'm not trading it on that chart. Rather, what I'm doing is combining that with a false break of the monthly pivot, right, the horizontal level. So it's actually cleaner on that, on the four hour chart. I'll just zoom in a little bit closer. You can see the monthly pivot coming through here. It combined with the daily pivot yesterday and we climbed back above it. We made the weekly pivot and we broke back through the monthly pivot and the daily pivot. So to me, that's a signal of a false break. Mate, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't got the screen. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> no. We've got we've got you on. I mean, okay, we can see your your well, lovely no, face. I'm working but hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, working hard, but uh, to no avail. Why? I don't know why. Is that any better? Oh, it's perfect. That <laughs> always. Okay, so let me try and explain that again. So what we're playing? Go back to the hourly chart. If you want to, if you want to trade a trend line or a trade line, then you've had a break here, you've had consolidation below, you've had a re-entry and you've had a retest, right? With that bar there. So you could have traded that bar there with a stop there. Now we didn't do that. What we rather did was have a look at the bigger picture and the bigger picture is telling me, really forget that trend line now because it's not a four hour trend line. What we do have, however, is a break of the monthly pivot, consolidation underneath it, re-entry above it and yesterday's daily pivot to boot and the hourly trade line and then we came back off the weekly pivot and retested the whole lot of that shebang right everything i've just mentioned we've retested now i'm not a massive fan of entering here because the weekly pivot could just bang it back down again but we have broken the weekly pivot we've retested it so my contention is if we're strong enough the bulls are strong enough to get back above the daily, back above the monthly, back above the trend line, then they're serious. They, they're just going to have a crack here as far as I'm concerned. And don't forget, we've also got a bullish bias because the last time we visited our, our range, right, which is our channel, was to the downside. We've rallied. We've come back. We haven't hit the top. So we're looking to go to the top of this range. Now, if you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about relative strength in a minute, because this is what I'm trying to work out with the Aussie dollar. How can I get short the Aussie? How? And I've been trying all week and haven't managed to do so. And, that, and that's been frustrating me. Yes, it has, but uh, we'll find a way. But the relative strength here, CAD Swiss, is pretty much on a par. And you can probably see that in a fairly sideways, a very flat channel that we're, we're trading in. Now, had we gone to hearsay, you might have called that a flag pattern and we're due to break out to the low side. It's gone on too far for that, in my humble opinion. But I still want to play the range, right? Top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top, blah, 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 blah. We have a little bit of a hiatus here where we're just going sideways, but there's no reason to think that this can't go there. The weekly pivot's an issue. There's no question about that. And that's why I'm not trading this at 10%, not even trading it at 1%, trading it at a quarter of a percent for that reason, because it's entirely possible that this is a double top and it's going to send us back to the bottom. But that's not the bigger picture that I see. And the relative strength CAD Swiss, in my opinion, over the last week or so is very even. And that's why we're in the middle of nowhere, right? This is actually no man's land where we are. Um, but the setup's there. So I'm, I'm okay to take the setup. But it is a false break of the trade line on hourly chart, but the monthly pivot more so on the, uh, the four hour chart upon which we are trading. 
Euro dollar four hour chart. We want to have a look at that, yeah? And Lewis, you're looking for downside. Okay, I'm not. And again, the reason is the structure that I have. And if I have a look at the structure, again, I've got the bottom of the range and we've been in this range for the longest time. I'm sure you guys have, have seen me draw that on many, many a monthly and weekly chart. That's going back to 2017 and we haven't been able to pop outside it with any, any um, aggression since. COVID-19 had a little bit of a statement and bang in the middle is where it landed, right? Of that range. So, you know, if you're ignoring that range, you're probably ignoring it at your own peril. And for that reason, we're now at the bottom of it. We've come back inside it and we haven't really hit the top here with the last bit. So we're really coming off the bottom. So we're still looking for higher lows. And there was one there, sent it back up to the top of the range. That's what we're looking to trade right. That's what I'm looking to trade right now. We've had another bounce, another bounce and another bounce off the bottom of not only that um, descending channel, but also the rectangle that we're trading. So I can't go short here, mate, with any, uh, with any conviction until that level's broken and is retested. So that's not for me. Uh, I'm still seeking a higher low. Now, I totally get that the dollar is strong and the euro is piss weak, but <laughs> the structure is not telling me that. The structure is telling me that it's got a lot of support here in this area. And for that reason, I can't go short until it's broken. So I hope that helps. And, and Ash just said it, it doesn't mean that it won't happen. Uh, it doesn't mean that you go long just because you've got to have a good reason to do so. And yes, I see the double or tweezer top off the weekly pivot, see all of that, um, but I just can't trade into this support level. It's got to break for me and be retested to prove that our structure is destroyed. And at the moment, our structure is holding tight. Uh, what else have we got? Anything else for me? Gold, gold, gold. Everyone likes gold, eh? Except me. Cad uh, Swiss is yesterday's high. Reminds me of Wave Riders. Yesterday's high, a large resistance. So we are five pips above. Yesterday's high on Cad Swiss. Yesterday's high on Cad Swiss is here. Yep. So that's exactly the same. Yep. I get your point. Uh, reminds me of a wave rider. Is yesterday's why a large resistance? So we are, yes, absolutely. That is why I'm not entering at the top of this candle and I'm giving it a little bit of a leeway. Yep, well spotted. Pound Aussie long. Gee whiz, that's a big call too, isn't it? Pound. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be trading the pound long <laughs> on this stage for anything. It's a tough call, isn't it? It really is. And again, I've got to go to with relative strength. And the relative strength that I look at is telling me that the pound and the Aussie are up SH1T Street. If I have a look at um, today, they're both at the bottom. If I have a look at the week, they're second and third last. If I have a look at the month, they are, hang on, an ad has just popped up. The pound is weaker than the Aussie by a long stretch. Um, now, I know we've had bad news on the Aussie, or is it? We had bad news earlier in the week. I don't think today's news was, was bad. I think it's a massive number for the Aussie, frankly. That 6.2% or 6.3% is unbelievable, in my hum humble opinion, as an unemployment rate. I expected 10 or better. Not that I'm an economist and all the, all the punters were saying 8 point something. So uh, to me, and, and I do, do want to go to that relative point, strength, at the moment, the relative strength is telling me that the dollar, the yen, the Swissy, and the CAD are all stronger than the Aussie at the moment. So for that reason, I'm looking for shorts, Aussie dollar, Aussie yen, Aussie Swissy, and Aussie CAD. Now, it's playing a merry dance. It really is. But there is a tradable bar right there. That one there. It's a lower high. We've broken back below the weekly pivot. We've retested it. We've actually snuck back above it. And it's a total mess, I've got to tell you. 
it is a total mess and it's really tough to trade. But that is a tradable bar. Is there any good reward to risk on it is the question. So you've got to risk 27 pips or do you put your stops back up here at 49 or 50? And your reward is 10 pips to the nearest support level. Do you want to take that? I don't know. You know, that's entirely up to you. I'd rather wait for the four hour chart to give me something a little bit better than that. I'd really like to see price close up here. That would get me interested because I'd be happy to take the 10 or 11 pips here as first take profit on that risk on a four hour chart because we've got much more scope to go further. We'd have to exit here on a 30 minute chart, but we can go through that on a four hour chart. So that's Aussie CAD, Aussie Swissy. As I mentioned before, I got into this earlier today on the news and I'm now out for a very small winner. It's setting up more like a long than a short. It's a total mess as well on the smaller time frames. But if you go out to the four hour chart, same again. If I was to get a close up here on this bar, I would trade it short. Aussie Yen, um, I'd really like to see uh, something off resistance here. We're too close to the, to the lows to trade it any time soon. We'd have to get way back up here if I'd like to, to trade that. And that's about it. Aussie dollar, as I said, it's got to, it's probably now gone a little bit too far for me even to trade it now. I don't know how, oh, there's one way, I suppose. We could trade it as a break bounce. Bang, bang, we could trade as an ABC. But as I said before, and this is the reason um, I was querying it before. Was this a test of the daily pivot or was it not? And I said it wasn't for me. So that keeps the daily pivot in the game and I wouldn't like to trade away from it until we do get back to it. So I think relative strength is going to be my friend ultimately, but gee whiz, I've had to be patient. It's like Monday to Thursday, I've been waiting to short the Aussie and um, it just doesn't happen. Won't come. But uh, the night is young, or the day is young. We may uh, we may yet find an opportunity. So, how's a pound trade going, or is it? No entry yet. Okay, we're still in the middle of nowhere, and hopefully, we need a, we need a nice good breakout to end the uh, end the week on the pound. Um, as both Ash and I say, I cannot cannot get warm the pound at the moment, and that frustrates me a little bit because I'm I'm actually not a I'm not a, averse to going along the pound, but gee, not at the moment. It just doesn't look likely, does it? Broken through the support. I guess there's one little support level left. If it gets through there, I think it's bye-bye pound. To trade it long, mm, can't see it. Not with the dollar strength at the moment. Yeah, there's, a, there's a question about uh, uh, oh, okay. free donkey. Um, pounds, dollar short with profit. <clears throat> which value should I close the trade? Well, um, you might want to have a look at that while, you, while you're on there, mate. But the first question that I'd have uh, for you, and this is this is what you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Um, you're right, PH. Sorry, mate, I'm the... listening and talking at the same time. I know it's, <laughs> it's quite off-putting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that to Alison? When she's talking, no, you're she talking. <laughs> <laughs> I am listening I'm and talking. <laughs> I'm trying to take it out on you. <laughs> I'm listening and talking to you at the same time. Not sure how you can be listening. <laughs> um, so uh, I, um, uh, yeah, j just on the on the on the pound. So that you've got to ask yourself a few questions. Firstly, um, what got you into the trade? Uh, what level did you get in at? Um, because. If you are in the trade because of dollar, you know, if, if it's a fundamental reason that you're in the trade, if it's a, it's a dollar strength thing, then as that, that fundamental picture changed, uh, that's the first thing. If you're in the strength because of a technical um, uh, a break and retest of a trend line, where is that trend line now? You know, or, or are you running along a trend line? Where is that trend line now? It's, it's, um, it's not really kind of a case of um, should you close a trade at levels? Because really, you should never really close a trade at levels. Because the, you know, the, the, if we close a trade, um, in fact, I can't really, I shouldn't really say that because that, that's when, 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 um, when your your analysis evolves, then it's much better. I always think it's much better to have every level as a soft target. You know, don't have it as a hard target because um, <clears throat> uh, unless you're um, 
unless your strategy uh, has dictated when you've done the uh, the analysis that if I take profit here and I move this here and do, and do, and do all this stuff, then I'm going to you know be net profit by the end of the month, by the end of the quarter, and by the end of the year. Um, that's absolutely fine. But while you're while you're kind of um, going through the phase where you're questioning where you should take profit, then the best thing to do is let trades let trades kind of evolve, let trades kind of like take shape, and then figure out what are what 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 should your parameters be. Um, you see, the difficult thing I, I find anyway, the difficult thing with um, with saying you should take profit here and you should take profit here, is that every single trade <clears throat> and every single market um, um, uh, structure and uh, and um, uh, what's the word anatomy, if you like, is different. They're all different, so there's not really a hard and fast rule where you should take profit unless you have a hard and fast rule, if that makes sense. You know, if you know I always do this, then always do that. Um, you know, but but uh, but if you um, if you if you don't uh, if you don't have those rules in place, and what you're trying to do is let trades run, then then you've got to figure something else out. You, you in fact that becomes a rule in a way as well. Um, but you've got to figure something else out. What do you need to see in the area that you would have taken profit to make make it that you take profit? Um, because if you haven't seen that, then you you just leave the trade run. <clears throat> but um, the best, the best course of action is always really um, to trail a stop. You know, try and try and have a try and have try and give you, you your trade room to breathe. When you maybe you take maybe you have a hard and fast rule about one half, but with with a, another portion of your trade, just try and let it breathe. Try and let it go, um, and uh, and see what happens. Um, it has to touch um, crystal if it crosses through the pivot. Then it's the next bar that has to that has to close above to suggest that you've got a bounce. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, the pivot the pivots are again, you know, there's something that that, uh, that we use as hard and fast areas because they are defined, uh, but sometimes it doesn't it doesn't quite get there. You could be a couple of pips short, um, but uh, but it's better to kind of always go like I'm always going to uh, follow the pivot rule. Otherwise, I'm going to start bending the rule to say, well, it hasn't quite touched the pivot here and you know, certainly for now, the best thing to do is is follow the the, uh, the pivot rule. Got to got to touch the uh, the level, and then and then you can uh, and then you can take a trade. Um, when you look at a lot of charts, then you can start getting a bit more creative. Um, Shukri on Ocado, if it forms a daily bearish shooting star candle, would we be looking for a correction? Any difference with red or green shooting star? Let's have a look at uh, Ocado. <clears throat> Do you want to quickly give me the screen, mate? God, we're in a bit of a... Oh, okay, I'll answer this question before I do, and, and yep. I'm done. So I've got to go. Um, CAD Swissy, if TP1... Sorry, if CAD Swissy hits TP1, do we need to move stop loss? I won't be moving stop loss because I'm going to take only a third off the table at that point, and I'll leave my stop loss where it is. What that really means... Um, is we're not in the clear yet, I, I guess at the end of the day but if you if you feel far more comfortable doing that then do that absolutely you can trade this aggressively if you want to do that you can don't take any profit at all and move your stops to entry that way you've still got a winning trade you can go for the full percentage and uh and not have anything at risk that's another way to trade it um that's a personal thing really um what i'd prefer to do is just take a little bit of risk off the table and still give it the room to breathe that I think it probably needs. Because we could come back to these pivots, in my humble opinion, just keep bouncing in this area. When the pivots are close together, it's very, very common to see that the price will stay there for quite some time. So that's my answer to the question. It's probably not what you want to hear, I know. But um, I'll do it that way. Many ways to do it. There you go, mate. Great stuff. Okay. Yeah, let's have a look at this um, this trade. Right, so Ocado. Um, so, firstly, um, just just to kind of get the um, just to get the terminology correct, this this isn't a shooting star. This is an inside bar. So, with a shooting star, it does involve a gap, but the gap goes higher rather than lower. So, the shooting star, and it doesn't matter on the color, no. Um, the shooting star would have opened up here. Would have would have would have gapped up. And then gone up. 
and then you know done something like that that's that's where it becomes a shooting star okay so this is this is an inside bar is it uh, currently it's an inside bar is it relevant at this point absolutely relevant you know look at how parabolic that move is um, that is suggesting that, uh, that Ocado, if it's going to have some weakness, is just going to absolutely tank. Now, the question is, let me just take that off. Where does it tank to? Uh, you know, firstly, that, 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 that's, the, uh, that's the first uh, aspect of it. Where does it come back to? It looks like it's going to be somewhere along there. So Ocado, for me, is an abs it's definitely a sell, isn't it? It looks, it looks really good for, for a selling opportunity here um, with, the, uh, with a stop at the high up there. Um, that could result in a, I don't know, what would that be? Maybe one, uh, that, that could easily be a, um, um, maybe a 2% drop in a cardo. So yes, I mean, thanks for bringing that to my attention because I am probably going to trade this as well. Um, so um, what I, I'm going to be looking at with a cardo is just checking my, um, my other time frames. Let's have a look at the day, the, the four hourly. Four hourly is not telling us a whole bunch. Let's have a look at the hourly. Lovely. Uh, look at that on the hourly. Really good um, uh, engulfing bar there. So actually, we could enter the low of this. We could enter the low of this and, and, and have stops at the highs. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter a cardo short here um, and, uh, and we'll see how we get on. But yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. That's fantastic. Um, if you've got the uh, availability to, to, uh, to trade that, then give it a go. Give it a go. I don't think we need to get, I don't think we need to wait um, for a, uh, for a daily bar. I think that the, uh, the hourly bar is enough. Um, Okay, so I think that's pretty much us, mate. I'm going to um, just uh, just just come off uh, while I get this uh, this trade on Ocado because it's on my other account, <clears throat> and then we will be um, we'll be back next week. So uh, let's say uh, let's say uh, goodbye to everybody for now. We'll be right, back mate. next week, uh, same trade time, same trade channel. Um, th for those of you in the U uh, US show, we'll see you in a few hours. Uh, FTSE is still running and it's broken through a level, which is fantastic. So we'll have a look how we're going to um, uh, analyze that later on. And I'll give you some of the reasons why, um, why the FTSE uh, looks like it still should bounce. But, uh, but if, it, um, if it continues to get lower on, on a few other time, uh, a few other charts, then, uh, then we can look to, to continue to play that down. You are welcome, Swee. We'll see you later on in the, in the US session. Um, <laughs> you guys keep such clean cut over MCO. Your family, we're all hippies. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not clean cut. I think the thing is, uh, PL, um, don't be fooled. I've always been pretty scruffy. So, uh, so actually, when it comes down to it, this is just a, a, a sidestep for me. You had a perm this morning, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, LT. We'll see you later on. Uh, see the, the, for the rest of you. We'll see you later on. Have a great uh, rest of the, uh, the the day and great rest of the week. We will see you next week. Same trade time, same trade channel. Monday at eight a.m. You threw me. Five to eight. <laughs> That's a day. Don't be late. Five to eight. See you later. Stay here.